Hey, what's happening? Doug Huntington here, and we're about to head out to a meetup here in the Atlanta, Georgia area. So I'm a little bit nervous, to be honest with you. I think we're gonna have uh, like a sort of a small group, you know, 10 or 15 people or so. And um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Should be cool, should be exciting. So uh, let's head out. All right, we're set up now, sort of. So I got my stuff laying out and it looks like we'll have sort of a, a generally quiet area over here. There is music playing, but I think I'll be able to talk over it. My voice actually doesn't carry very well. So that can be a bit of a problem. So we'll probably try and get everybody like right in this little zone right here. So we will see how it goes. I was gonna talk a little bit about just like growing a site, getting more traffic and stuff like that. So for some people, it could be a little bit of review, things that I've talked about before, but there are three main areas that I encourage people to check out and that would be uh, adding more content to your site, KGR, keyword golden ratio. Uh, that's a really good place to start. Also, you can improve existing content, which there's a few ways to approach it. You can outsource it, very expensive, or I'll mention a couple like better ways to do it. Um, and then getting links, and that's something that I, th I think most people neglect. Um, it sucks to try and get links out there. You're gonna get rejected most of the time. It's kind of confusing, it's hard to tell if it's working, but um, I mean, I'm guilty of this too, just, I mean, it does suck to get, to ask for those links. And um, so, back to the beginning. If your site maybe doesn't have a ton of content yet, or maybe you haven't started your site yet, just publishing more KGR, low competition stuff is gonna be a good way to go. Has anyone like published like a lot of KGR content and it worked out well? There, anyone? okay. So you're not gonna hit a home run usually. Every now and then you'll get lucky, get more traffic than you expect. But um, a lot of times if you publish in mass, like how many did you publish, Esther? 115 okay so like if you can just get one or two visitors a day to each one of those which may be a tall order but um, that's obviously a couple hundred people going to your site uh, one or two are probably gonna be a home run like uh, Josh did you have any that turned out really well okay like way more than you expected right so if you already have quite a bit of content you may want to add to your existing content and improve it and one of those approaches that I really like, it's kind of boring. You have to pull reports from the search console. And I think maybe if you've been doing this for a little while, like you, you understand how to pull the reports, but it's difficult to separate the, the signal from the noise because there's like thousands of lines. And one way that I like to do it is to pull a CSV for a specific URL that I'm like, hey, maybe, maybe this one looks good. I'm getting some traffic. So you pull a report for that URL <clears throat> for, the uh, queries and then uh, you can get the position, the number of impressions, and then you have somewhere to start. You still may end up with like hundreds or thousands of keywords, so it's hard to figure out what to, to go for there. Has anyone tried to pull such a report, by the way? Just curious, so you know. So for anyone that didn't hear, basically Esther was saying, if, if you uh, check out some of those reports, then you'll find like keywords you're pulling in traffic for or impressions that you didn't even know was happening. And the cool part is like, it's proprietary data for you. No one else can get your search console data. Anyone can go to like Ahrefs or uh, SEMrush and you get that, your competitor analysis. But th that data is just yours from the search console. So um, a good way to filter it is like, find something with a high number of impressions, relatively speaking, for your report, and then uh, maybe the number of clicks. And if you identify some, some good ones, then you can add a section, like uh, some H2, H3 tags, couple hundred words. So now you're actually trying to target that. So that's a good way to approach it. And um, quickly, we'll just mention the, the link building stuff. So it's either, <laughs> Super expensive to do, like if you hire folks, which I've been testing out a couple companies, they generally do a good job. It's very expensive. So when I've brought it back in house, I'm doing it uh, myself with a couple of VAs I'm working with. It's like eight to 12 times cheaper. It's like ridiculous. And if you have a system in place, it's still pretty fast. Actually, it's just as fast as working with a company and it's just so much cheaper. So. It's hard, it's hard to like encourage, or it's hard for 
me to get people to believe to like build those links and they really pay off because it takes like months potentially for those to pay off and you don't know if like maybe your rankings go down like in November 8th like uh, people some people got hit which maybe we'll talk about that in the Q&A in a second but you don't you don't really know like what's helping or what's hurting because there's like a million factors going on at the same time so Anyway, those are three big areas. Uh, you know, don't try and focus on all of them at the same time. Maybe just pick one for a little while, work on it for a month or six weeks, and then move on to the next, and hopefully you'll get better at it. So, all right. So the question is, um, once people start making some money, what should they do long-term? Is that pretty much it? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, you have to figure that one out on your own, but most likely you gravitate towards like, hey, I like doing a lot more content. Some people love link building, um, like Ron Stefanski, who's been on the show a couple times. He really enjoys link building, and he went through a phase where he like built a ton of links, and then he got a little bored with it, and he's focusing on a couple other areas. So um, you kind of have to figure out, I think, like where you're getting traction, and then like go towards that because and there's other stuff you're going to enjoy better as well so you're ranking for a term already and then what do you do to improve upon that right so you can add some more content so maybe that's uh, redundant there but add more content around that topic where you maybe have a gap so do a gap analysis on your competitors find out what's missing make it better fill in the gaps blah 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 FAQs are really good to add as well. And you can, again, put those as subheadings just to make it like very clear that you're adding content about that. Just brainstorming, going outside, maybe you create some uh, images, some sort of, not an infographic exactly, but an image that could be helpful. And then you have like more valuable information around that. Thinking about more on-site stuff, you can add some internal links that are sort of optimized via anchor text for the term that you're trying to rank for. So that would be helpful. And then offsite as well. So if you can get some links to that page, potentially with a partial match anchor text. I'll just try and answer your question. So Josh, you were gonna ask about link building and stuff, right? So I think on average, I've been paying like 50 to 60 bucks per like link placement or guest post. And when I was using a company or, or when I have used a company, it's like, as cheap as 200, but those are not great. Um, and usually it's more like four to 600, something like that. So whatever the math works out. But basically they're charging to have a link on their site. So I've been, I try and test stuff out before I uh, start talking about it much. So I've been doing this for a few months. I've tested it a couple years ago as well. And at this point, the supply and demand for like guest posts, like everyone's sending out like a ton of emails, I get, a lot of them just for my site. So a lot of people realize that they can charge and they have an asset that they can make money on. So they're asking for fees. Where am I linking to? So I'm linking to like 50% to the home page, 50% to inner pages based on like what I'm trying to rank for. The anchor text is usually uh, for the home page. It's branded anchor text, so niche site project or something like that. For inner pages, sometimes it is still branded anchor text because that's a safe way to do it. Sometimes it's like a partial match for the keyword. So sometimes it's an exact match, but not. I don't try not to do too much of that. So it's not like an SEO is building links. It's like kind of more natural so uh, guest posts and like more like link placements they call it niche edits or something which I think is a dumb name by the way Any, anyone else think that's a dumb name it's, yeah because I had to look it up and I'm like yeah they're trying to be cute but it's not as catchy you gotta put golden ratio in there or something like that that's catchy people remember it yeah so it's more like the, the niche edits which seems to work fine like like I said before it's hard to tell when you're building links, there's like 10 other things you're doing too. So it's really hard to tell, like, is this helping directly? And I'm not running experiments and I'm not trying to control it specifically. So my pitches are short. It's like two sentences. Basically, since it's transactional, like you can get the link super quick. And let's say I'm doing a guest post and I'm trying to like be valuable, provide valuable information and all that. Like they have to format it and do some other stuff. And it's like, it's gonna take longer and it's like more work than just putting in like two sentences. Yeah, because it's transactional, it's just like very clear. 
we're not beating around the bush. And then if they're interested, they'll go for it. If not, then I won't bother them anymore. So, and then the super key thing, and then we'll let some other people ask questions is um, don't tell anyone this, all right? Because I haven't talked about it yet. It's very dumb, right? It's super simple, but basically, if you can get one or two of these placed uh, after you have the successful transaction, don't tell anyone about this. Just ask them, hey, do you have any blogger friends that maybe would be interested in working with me too? And then you have a warm introduction. So the, the success rate is like 80% or something like that. And then every now and then someone's gonna hook you up with a list of like 10 people. And um, you know, usually they hang out together, they're in a Facebook group, blah, blah, blah. At some point, people started contacting me. So I, like, they just knew that I was out there. So they were contacting me like, hey, we want to work with you too. Now you got to watch out, right? If they're doing that for everybody, you don't want to hop on a site that's like been abused or whatever. But yeah, just ask for a referral and then you have a warm intro. So they're like way more likely to uh, like work with you then. So is it better to like kind of really focus on a niche, be specific or like go a couple levels up? Basically a couple levels up probably. So if you look at the departments in Amazon, like that's kind of where you want to aim. So like outdoor, fitness, home appliances or whatever. You should however focus on like individual products early on so that you can like rank for those and you're not trying to like do too much. That's easy to do, right? You're like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, my first 20 pieces of content, why don't I cover like 15 different products? Don't do that, just cover like two. Then you can start ranking for those and then sort of like branch out after you get some traction. But if you spread yourself too thin on like the topic, then you'll probably end up like having a harder time ranking. The question is exact match domain or generalize the domain name? So you should make it like brandable. So ge generalize, if you do an EMD, you're kind of roping yourself in, painting yourself in a corner for expansion. So you're just kind of stuck. So don't do that. How do you know if your niche is good? How do you know if your site's good? So this part won't be helpful, but maybe we can go back and forth. So you'll know it's successful because you have traffic and you're making money. But I think you actually want something more helpful than that, right? <laughs> you won't know until after. So you gotta do something and then you can adjust. So the good part is you can adjust. So if it's not quite working, usually you can tweak some things. You can hire me for coaching, for example, and then I can tell you. Or you can get a friend, you know, maybe you meet somebody here and you're like, hey, Josh, you look like you're smart. Can you have a look at this? Something like that, just for example. Yeah, so you, don't, you really don't know until you get started and then after that you can adjust. So the question is like whether it's a good idea to use guest post on your own site and like link back and help another brand out or whatever. And Evan said a good brand that has like legit writers and good content. They, they want to like get links and work with them. So I think it's fine. Cause I mean, I look at, I try and give like real examples. You have like niche site project and I have a few guest posts. I've had you and Marty write for me some, right? That's no big deal. It's kind of a normal thing that you see out there. It is an internet marketing blog, so some people are like, can you give like real examples? And I can't think of any like right off the top of my head, but like as writers, right? You're, you used to be a writer, right? You're, I guess you're still a writer. And so technically like it's pretty normal for people to contribute and work with other brands for various reasons. So I think it's normal and it should be fine. And if they're good at writing content, then there's no harm. And you, you can actually like give them keywords that you know are gonna rank. Yeah, yeah. And it could be a way, I haven't done this yet, but I've thought about just, because I get a bunch of pitches and I'm like, oh, why don't I charge $300? And then like not many people would go for it. But if I just get a couple of those per month, that's another $600 for like almost no work. So that's pretty good. I'd do that. Do I have any concerns about buying links, which is technically gray hat. So whatever I just was talking about, like doing the niche edits, it would be considered gray hat, but like it's essentially like impossible to prove, right? Technically, if you're doing anything and you're trying to get links to help your rankings, Google doesn't like it. So it's like kind of unprovable. So it's okay. So long term, I wouldn't have too many concerns as long as it's like a small percentage of the overall links. So the logic behind that is if I ran into trouble, let's say I, I paid to build links to niche site project 
and I'll just make up numbers, I don't know exactly. Let's say I have 500 referring domains pointing to my site. Maybe I could go up to like 100 additional referring domains pointing to my site, knowing that like if I got penalized, I could disavow those 100 and it's only, what is that, 18% or something like that? So I can get rid of 18%. It wouldn't be great necessarily to lose those links, but it's not like, um, like unrecoverable. So, so keep it to a low percentage. And I think, I mean, some people, some people would argue like having like some other link building, like doing gray hat or stuff that's like PBNs would be okay if it's a low percentage, which is hard to argue against it as long as you have like a way that you can recover if you ran into an issue. Cause it's not a hundred percent guaranteed that you're gonna get a penalty or something. Um, even if you're not doing anything wrong, you can still have issues. So yeah, that is the trouble with the like recent updates is like no one really knows what to do. There's like some things that could be helpful, but I don't know anyone who's like done those things and then like everything was fine. Uh, one person who was on the show, Linus, if people are, uh, if you remember him, he was like in high school when uh, I interviewed him first. Now he's in college. I haven't published his latest interview, but like he had a site that got hit in November, or sorry, he got hit in the end of September, right? Tra yeah, traffic dropped, right? Then in November, it went up, but he didn't know there was an update. So I was like, hey, like, what's going on? Like, what happened? And he was like, oh, I think it's because I made those changes. And I was like, was it November 8th and 9th? And he said, yes. And I was like, it, it was nothing that you did. It was just, you just got, you got lucky. <laughs> and uh, I have seen, like, so, like you said, sites get hit and then they recover a couple months later, no action taken. Yeah, there's no telling. And then I was thinking about what you mentioned, you know, you got two sites and you're you're trying to do too much so you figured out like you're just going to focus on one right well i think without knowing any other details probably the one that's, that is making money just ignore the other one for like i would say a year but every quarter just like reevaluate like okay do i still feel good is this other site still reacting well and then it'll like lift a weight off and you're like okay it's gonna be fine, I can ignore this one. You can always come back to it when you want to. You built them from scratch? No. You bought them? Yes. Okay, so potentially like you have a site that you could come back to um, or you could sell it, right? Um, it'll be an aged site, so, but probably just hang on to it. I, I reached that point where I had like five or six sites and I was like, oh, I'm gonna do a little bit here and there and was making very little progress and then just decided I'm gonna actually just ignore these. And um, I, it's been years and now I have very old age sites. <laughs> so at some point I can mess with them again, but I, I really haven't. So yeah, you could always go back to it. All right, well, it was a good live Q and A. Hopefully I can edit this. There's not too much music behind it. It does look like I hit record, so that's good. So, all right, thanks everybody.